live, getting results. This is News 6 at 4. Breaking right now at 4, a standoff situation in a Baldwin Park home with Orange County deputies surrounding a home on Beach Street. They tell us acid bombs were set off in the house, causing neighbors to call deputies. Witnesses tell us one person has been taken into custody and two others are still inside that home. We'll have a live report coming up in just minutes. First, though, we are pinpointing storms in parts of central Florida. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ginger Gadsden. And I'm Julie Broughton. Lisa is off tonight. Meteorologist Candace Campos is in for Tom tonight. And Candace, I know you're pinpointing some severe weather as well. We had some really bad weather over Osceola County is now pushed into Brevard. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning until 430. You can see plenty of lightning tracking its way into south central Brevard County. We clocked at about 500 lightning strikes in the last 30 minutes. We are clocking about uh, 60 mile per hour wind gust possible underneath some of these very strong cells with over two and a half inches of rainfall falling per hour. We just checked the latest hail locator. It looks like no hail has been uh, spotted by the radar over Brevard County, but we are watching a little pocket here that is have that does have the potential to create some hail as we track over the next 30 to 45 minutes. But that is the one area that is seeing the rain everywhere else. It's all about the heat as temperatures soar into the mid to low 90s, cooling down slightly thanks to some rain. I'll be pinpointing more rain in the forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Candace, thank you. Breaking right now, we are getting new details about an active standoff in Baldwin Park. Deputies tell us acid bombs were set off in a home, causing neighbors to call for help. Witnesses tell us one person has been taken into custody. This is happening on Beach Boulevard, not far from Lake Baldwin Lane. That's where we find New Six's Clay Lapard. And Clay, what are you learning from deputies there on the scene? Julie and Ginger, we're getting a lot of new information coming in in just the past minute, few minutes here. Again, deputies have been out here since about 9.20 this morning along the stretch of Beach Boulevard after they got the call that two acid bombs were set off just outside a home right down this way. Since then, I want to show you a little bit of video that was sent in to us by a viewer a short time ago that show what appears to be one suspect taken into custody. At this point, the, uh, deputies with the Orange County Sheriff's Office say two people have been taken into custody and at this point a search warrant has been signed and they're actually prepping their SWAT teams to go inside the home in here just to double check that there's no one else in at this time. Now again neighbors tell us that this part of Baldwin Park has been known to have some troubles here and there but it's still scary hearing about something like this going on in their neighborhood. Again deputies been out here since a little after nine o'clock this morning. We will give you more information as it becomes available for now in Orange County. Clay Lepard, News 6. Clay, thank you. New information on a drive-by shooting at a park where two people were hurt. It was breaking news last night at 11. A man and a woman were both hit by gunfire. We're now learning this is not the first time this park has been the scene of a crime. Just last week, police responded to a shooting there at Xander's Park, which is along 11th Street in Winter Garden. And that is where we find News 6's Nadine Giannis. Nadine, you just spoke to the woman who was shot at the park. I did, Ginger. She is a 19-year-old girl who said she was coming here to hang out with her friends when a car pulled up and someone inside started shooting. And if you take a look, Sanders Park here is a place where kids feel safe to play during the day, but unfortunately, now it's a park where police are stepping up their presence tonight. It went through my calf and then it went up upwards into the knee area. A purple bandage wraps around 19 year old John Quayla McCreary's leg where a bullet is still stuck in her knee. She was one of two people shot in a drive by shooting at Xander's Park in East Winter Garden last night. As I was running and I felt my whole body get hot and I felt my leg like feel so wet. So I just um, went to screaming. I was like, I'm shot, I'm shot. And then I went to collapse and but somebody grabbed me before I fell. In 911 calls, you can hear the fear in a whispering voice from a caller at the park right as it happened around 9 o'clock. You can also hear that caller realize a second person was shot. Police identify as Sherman Ivy, or known as Shaggy, who sleeps at the park in this neighborhood. His mother tells us off camera he was shot twice in the head and is fighting for his life today. It's an unfortunate incident. Obviously, we need to do everything we can to be safe. Um, if you see something that is concerning to you, bring it to our attention. We're a 24-7 business. This while Winter Garden police are making sure they're making a presence while also trying to find 
who pulled the trigger. That's stupid. Like, if you wanted to shoot somebody, they could have went to the person they wanted. Or, like, that's stupid anyways to be shooting. It's a public park. Kids was up here. So, I don't know. And so we just learned today that it was just a little over a week ago when her garden responded to another shooting at this same park. They said that shooting involved a group from Orlando clashing with a group here in Winter Garden. Now they're investigating to see if those two shootings are related. But neighbors here, Ginger, are sick of this violence. They say it has to stop, especially for the sake of these kids behind me. We'll hear from those neighbors in my story tonight at 6 o'clock. Absolutely frightening for them. Nadine Giannis reporting live. Nadine, thank you. It has been nearly a year and a half since Orange County Deputy Norm Lewis was killed in a motorcycle crash. He died while helping search for the gunman who had just killed Orlando Police Lieutenant Deborah Clayton. Today, the motorist who caused the fatal motorcycle collision entered a plea of no contest. News 6 investigator Mike DeForest is live at the Orange County Courthouse. And Mike, I understand the driver who caused Deputy Lewis's death was planning to fight the traffic citation? That's right, 80 year old Billy Gerard uh, could have paid off these traffic citations more than a year ago, but he wanted his day in court. However, at the very last minute, his attorney entered a plea. State troopers and other law enforcement officers packed the courtroom today in part to honor fallen Orange County Deputy Norm Lewis and in part to make sure the man down by Mark Heath Lloyd, Deputy Lewis was taking part in the manhunt. As Lewis drove his motorcycle down Pine Hills Road, investigators say Billy Gerard abruptly turned his van into the path of the oncoming deputy. I will uh, accept the agreed upon disposition. Today, Gerard's attorney entered a plea of no contest to failing to yield while making a left hand turn. As punishment, he'll lose his driver's license for six months and must pay a $1,000 fine. Norm's life is gone. Billy Jean Gerard is still here. Although Deputy Lewis's mother was satisfied the motorist received the maximum punishment possible, she wants state lawmakers to increase the penalties for causing a traffic death. And she wants an apology from the driver who killed her son. The fact that he didn't have the audacity to show up and face Norm's mom, that's coward. And I'm letting you know, Billy, Jean Gerard, what you did, only God can help you. Now, by entering a plea, Gerard's attorney points out that the 80 year old is not admitting to any wrongdoing. Now, originally, uh, Gerard was uh, issued a citation for not wearing corrective lenses that were required while he was driving. Investigators later learned that he had had eye surgery just before the crash that cleared up his vision problems. And so that ticket was dismissed. Julie. Mike, thank you. Mike DeForest reporting live for us. Sad news now out of New York. Fashion designer Kate Spade was found dead in her New York City apartment today. Police say it's an apparent suicide. The Associated Press is reporting the housekeeper found the 55-year-old dead in her Park Avenue home. Police say a note was found. Her brand is best known for its designer handbags. Today marks one year since the deadly shooting at an Orange County business. Five people were killed on June 5th, 2017 inside Fiamma on Forsyth Road. Investigators say a disgruntled former employee walked into the business and started shooting. News 6's Eric Von Anken is here with what we've learned about the investigation over this past year. Eric. Ginger Julie, around March of this year, the Orange County Sheriff's Office released its final report about the shooting here. It focused heavily on who the suspected gunman was, his relationship to the victims, and how the this tragedy all unfolded. Deputies say just before 8 in the morning on June 5th, former employee John Newman Jr. walked through the doors of Fiamma and fired his first shot without saying a word. They say he killed Robert Snyder with a 9mm handgun. He then ran through the building chasing after other employees, firing more shots, killing Brenda Montanez Crespo, Kevin Lawson, and Jeffrey Roberts. Kevin Clark was shot in a work area. The gunman then took his own life before deputies got there. Seven other workers survived the violence. As for the possible motive, Newman was fired in April of 2017 for stealing awnings and then selling them. He tried to get his job back, but he was denied. Deputies believe this may have had something to do with it, singling out those who had something to do with his firing. Investigators later interviewed Newman's mother and sister. They say he may have been suffering from a mental illness. Ginger. Thank you. Online, we have posted the victim stories and more details from the Sheriff's Office report. You can find it on clickorlando.com.
Results at four for a woman who lost her wedding rings. She accidentally lost them in a Volusia County Walmart, and somehow they ended up in the local landfill. But after a two-hour search and the help of the Edgewater store, the rings were found. There were my rings still wrapped up in perfect shape, so I have my treasures back. My heart is full, and I wanted to thank you very much for the part that you played. That's the voicemail Teresa Williams left for Rubicon, the company that manages the store's trash. She says she was about to give up when she came across her treasures. Yes. I love that because you can hear the emotion yes, in her she's voice. So happy. Yeah, wonderful. Well, coming up at four, identifying the helpers when a disaster strikes, especially now that we're in hurricane season. Whether it's emergency workers or your local meteorologist. Ahead, how a national series is using a quote from Mr. Rogers to deliver an important message to kids and their families. But first, big changes coming to the Miss America pageant next at four. How it plans to change the way the contestants are, are perceived. You're watching News 6 at 4, getting results. We will be right back. And during the break, we are streaming live on Facebook. Search Ginger Gadsden News 6 on Facebook right now. Developing right now, the Miss America pageant is getting rid of its swimsuit competition. The move is part of a broader change in light of the recent Me Too movement, shifting to talent and scholarship instead. Miss America Board of Directors Chairwoman Gretchen Carlson says the organization will no longer stage a pageant, but rather a competition that will be more inclusive of women of all sizes. She said, quote, we will no longer judge our candidates on their outward physical appearance. For the first time in the event's 97-year history, the organization is now led entirely by women. We're getting a lot of feedback on our Facebook page about this story. Patricia simply says, about time. And Anne writes, it's time has come and gone. Former Miss America and University of Central Florida graduate Erica Dunlap joins us live on set. Hear her reaction to these changes coming up at 4.30. Right now, the number of people killed by Guatemala's Fuego volcano eruption continues to rise tonight. And now more hazards threatening grieving residents there. At least 69 people were killed after the volcano erupted Sunday, spewing a river of lava and plumes of smoke almost six miles into the air. At least 15 people have been hospitalized, including 12 children. Some of them have severe burns. Rescuers were able to find a baby pulled from an ash-covered house, seemingly unharmed, a day after the eruption started. And during a crisis, it is important to identify the helpers, people who jump into action and think of others before themselves. And this hurricane season, it is crucial to let children know who to look for in times of disaster. I talked to PBS station WUCF about their new project, Meet the Helpers, to find out how you can make sure you and your family stay safe. Hi, my name is Julie Broughton and I am a helper. I am very proud of my job because I get to help keep people safe. Images like this of storms and tragedies can be scary for kids. After the Pulse shooting, producers at PBS station WUCF realized the need to talk to kids about tough news stories and built on the famous Mr. Rogers quote about helpers. Look for the helpers. My mother always told me, look for the helpers. There will always be helpers helping. Police officers like me are important helpers in our neighborhood. The Meet the Helper series features emergency workers like police officers and doctors children may encounter during a crisis. The hospital may seem scary at first, but everything we do here is to help you. Letting them know that there are adults out there making sure that they're keeping them safe and giving them information makes them feel at ease. It makes children feel that in these scary situations, they're not alone and they know that they are safe. Producer Kristen Benjamin tells me they worked with UCF education professor Dr. Judith Levin on the scripts, keeping them age appropriate for kids four to seven, and made sure each helper delivered the message in the Mr. Rogers style. The way that Mr. Rogers would always communicate is making sure they're talking to you directly, talking to the children directly, not talking to the parents, talking to the children directly. I will do my best to make sure you and the grown-ups in your life have all the information you need to protect yourself during a weather emergency. 
Now, these helper videos will air nationally during kids programming on PBS. And to watch all of the videos, we put a link for you on ClickOrlando.com. And they did such a great job with that project when you go through and watch just the language and the way it's written. So I was what very happy What a great idea. To be yes. I always knew you were a helper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're a helper as well. <laughs> Me and my friends, as I said. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right, Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is off. Candace Campos is mm -hmm. in. And do we have one warning out there? We have now one warning. We had two in Osceola about an hour ago, and now most most of the worst of the activity has shifted out towards Brevard. We have that in effect for a couple more minutes. Okay. 430 is when they will drop the advisory if they can. So let's talk about the weather story first as we start breaking down what we can expect for tonight. Once that little batch of moisture kind of comes to an end down south, we will be quiet, warm and humid tonight. For tomorrow, won't be as hot. Temperatures will be about 10 degrees. I'd say more 5 to 7 degrees cooler than where we were today. And the main reason for it, we're adding a lot more cloud cover and a better chance of storm more of a widespread chance and it looks like that widespread chance will continue throughout at least the weekend more of a summertime pattern and we'll see plenty of sunshine in the morning and those showers and th thunderstorms start to fire up by midday you can see here on the radar everyone pretty much from Orange County northward is pretty much dry down in Osceola County we are watching this one batch here down that's moving its way through Keenansville in 441 but this is the one that is that did spark the advisory about 553 lightning strikes in the last 30 minutes Minutes. You can see there are some pockets of some very heavy rains, very heavy downpours. Right now we are tracking over two and a half inch of rain per hour in parts of Vieira, out by Lotus, Cocoa Beach South, Satellite Beach, and out by um, Palm Shores as well. A lot of lightning, and there have been reports already of wind gusts up to about 49 miles per hour. So that's certainly very gusty and very windy. Hail locator on our radar showing that we have a possibility of seeing it across South Cocoa Beach, out by Lotus, some pea sized hail could be possible if you live out in that area and you do hear a little bit more of a louder uh, rainfall that could be actually pea sized hail. But right now for areas that haven't seen the rain, you're seeing a lot of heat. 91 degrees out in Sanford. We did have one little batch of rain move right over the airport, which why temperatures aren't as hot. But right now 82 degrees. But check out those temperatures out in Leesburg. 90 in Leesburg, Daytona Beach as well. Feels like temperatures not as bad as yesterday. Again, we are seeing those little pockets and showers popping through. 97 it feels like in Sanford feels like 91 out in New Smyrna Beach. So here's what's going on. We have this weak frontal boundary. That's pretty much the focal point for those showers and thunderstorms across our southern zones today. That will start to lift back up north and more of that widespread chance of rain and storms will return in the forecast and you'll see a difference compared to today primarily because of all that added cloud cover. But with the cloud cover comes some cooler temperatures. We'll check here your hour by hour forecast for tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by Lexus of Orlando and Lexus of Winter Park. Temperatures for tonight will be cooling into the low 80s. It will be a very muggy night, but check out your highs. Temperatures will be heating up again with rain coverage up to about a 60%. Now let's roll out here your next seven days, and you'll see that those temperatures are going to be staying near average in the upper 80s, low 90s, and the chance of rain back into the forecast at least throughout the weekend. Ladies. Candace, thank you. Do you want to give your favorite places in Orlando some recognition? Now through July 20th, you can place your vote in the top 10 summer categories like Best Beach, Best Local Brewery, Best Attraction, and more. To vote, just go to clickorlando.com slash best of. Still ahead at four, a delay in trips around the moon. Yeah, why customers will have to wait a little longer to blast off in a SpaceX rocket. And coming up at 4.30, honoring a man loved by the community, his family, and by the Sanford Fire Department after his tragic death during a boat race. Tonight, a shakeup for Miss America. The 2019 edition will scrap a long-standing pageant tradition, the swimsuit competition. Joining us now, Miss America 2004 and Orlando native Erica Dunlap. Welcome. Thank you Hello. for joining us. You the the pageant yes. 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 Thank you for having me. So Gretchen Carlson, the pageant's chairwoman, made the big announcement this morning about the changes with the swimsuit competition. What was your reaction when you heard this? Um, it was, I'm going to miss the swimsuit competition, quite frankly, but um, I support the leadership in coming up with a new solution to, to revive the Miss America brand. So hopefully this is uh, going to be a positive direction for us. But I definitely, I enjoyed being able to compete in all phases of competition. And I think that it really helped me to you know, be the woman that I am, much less the Miss America that I've been able to be. Sure. Do you think it will now open it up to a lot more people? And is that a good thing or not such a good thing? 
I think the cream always rises to the top. You know, at the end of the day, this has always been a competition. It's not just a beauty pageant. And you're really competing against your very best self every single yeah. time. And that's what I tell contestants. What I, the, the methodology that I used to win was that I was always focused on me. And when you focus on being better than your last best, mm. then you're always going to come up to the top if it's meant for you um, and if it's in your time. So I think that more people will definitely have the opportunity, but that doesn't mean that every you're just going to become Miss America sure. because you want to. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's not I'm not taking easy. the stage anytime soon is what you're <laughs> saying. But you certainly could. <laughs> <laughs> but, but beyond your overall, your outward appearance, being yeah. Miss America is so much more than just your swimsuit. It's more than your evening out. Mm -hmm. It's more than your talent even, but your talent, your swimsuit, evening out, all those components together create this entire whole package person. Yeah. And that's what we really need as a Miss America is someone who is able to um, be able to, to there go you are to in your swimsuit there, there I am back in my in swimsuit. Day. Yeah, back back in those <laughs> days fifteen years ago. Uh, but someone who can go to a children's hospital and speak to yeah. children and inspire them in their darkest times. Someone who can go to a veterans hospital and um, console young vets who are coming back from um, very treacherous situations that they weren't accustomed to and possibly a different body. You know, Miss America does a variety of things beyond just being in a swimsuit. You're never in your swimsuit, actually. Well, I was going to say, if you're doing humanitarian work, you're not out in your no, swimsuit. you're not going to be in your swimsuit. Right? But, yeah. you know, you and I were talking earlier, and you were saying that the swimsuit competition, it's not about what you look like in a swimsuit. It's about discipline and being able to kind of live that lifestyle and be your best. And we have a nice close-up of your crown there. That's your it actual is. crown. Yes. yes, and it's actually, it has a little ding here because... It's fallen. You know, that's the reality <laughs> of the crown, man. Sometimes yeah. it falls down and it has battle bruises and mm -hmm. all kinds of things. But what I really appreciate about this new change is that we get a chance to hear from the public um, yeah. what what is important. And this is not a matter of men who aren't going to watch Miss America. Listen, if you're a guy that was just watching Miss America for swimsuit, you missed out on the whole thing. You know, right? <laughs> right? You missed exactly. the whole shebang. <laughs> so you really should be watching Miss America for the total package young lady that captures your eye and someone that you just think has it. Yeah. And the it to be able to have the stamina to be Miss America, travel the country for 340 days out of the year, suspending her education for the year to be a representative of this country and be an ambassador of hope. Enjoy. My God, I mean, you're not only beautiful, but I just want to follow you around because you've said such positive things. I mean, I think we can all learn from that. It's I'm so Miss wonderful. America. You have to be happy. <laughs> but really, Miss I, I am a positive person, and that's another part of being Miss America is that there are times when you're in situations that are a little uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. being Miss America, you have grace, you have poise, and that's yeah. something that the ideal of femininity in the time mm. um, reflected that. And so I think that's a really important factor that I don't want to be lost in the shuffle. All wow. right, Erica Dunlap, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to try your crown on later You're on. You're more than welcome. Yeah, you. I've maybe done that once or twice <laughs> before.